Welcome back to Precalculus. Today we're going to take a look at the real number line. So, it's going to be a pretty quick video. I just need to introduce this little line here and we'll talk about uh, different types of inequality. So, what is the real line? Well, the real line is something that was probably introduced to you in elementary school and basically the very center of this line is the number zero and then we can add numbers along this line and what we say is because we have this line here is that it's gonna be an ordered line so numbers are ordered from smallest to largest of course there is no smallest or largest number in the real line it goes from negative infinity to infinity it's infinite so there's no smallest or largest number but there is structure to it so for instance um, negative 10 is going to be smaller than negative 1. Uh, between 0 and 1 is going to be the number 1 half. Between 0 and 1 half is going to be the number 1 fourth. And basically, in between the numbers 1 and 1 fourth, there's going to be an infinite amount of numbers. In fact, between the numbers 1 and pi on the real line, there's going to be an infinite amount of numbers. In fact, between any two numbers on the real number line, there are an infinite amount of numbers. So, wrap your brain around that one. There you. Anyway, so the really important thing here is that numbers are ordered, and these are all the real numbers. In fact, this line we're just going to call with our boldface R. And when we introduce complex numbers, we're going to see that, hey, there's actually another dimension to this line, but we won't talk about that yet. So you didn't hear it from me. It's blasphemous. Okay. In the real line, because it's ordered, we have to be able to talk about where numbers lie in relation to each other. So we have signs. We have a is less than b. So what we have here is we have a, and then we use this less than sign for b. And basically, what you'll learn in elementary school, if you're back to mathematics, you don't really remember, um, the open face, the teeth on the hungry alligator opens towards the bigger number. So when we say A is less than B, that means that the arrow, the point, the smaller portion points at A, while this big bit points at B because B is bigger. So when we say that A is greater than B, then what we do is we have the open side facing A and the closed side facing B, because A is greater than B. One that you already know is when A is equal to B. And that's just the equal sign. So we'll see how to represent this on a number line in the next video, but for now, I want you to answer these questions. So take a moment, answer these questions, and come back, and I'll give you the answers. So, I have some inequalities here. There's a couple. I say, is the square root of 4 greater than the square root of 3? This is greater. And the answer to this is yes. The square root of 4 is greater than the square root of 3. Why? Because 4 is greater than 3. So if we take the square root of both numbers, then this is still going to be true. Here's the second question. Is 16 squared less than 255? Well, to answer this question, we have to say, what is 16 squared? 16 squared is going to be 256. So here's the question. Is 256 less than 255? And the answer is no. So that statement is not true. What about this one? In fact, what about this sign? What does this greater than with a bar under it mean? Well, this is greater than or equal. So if 3 squared is greater than square root of 81, or if 3 squared is equal to the root of 81, then it's true. So what is 3 squared? 3 squared is 3 times 3. That's 9. What is the square root of 81? 
what times what equals 81? Well, that's 9. So what we're saying here is, is 9 greater or equal to 9? And the answer is going to be yes, because 9 is equal to 9. So 9 is greater than or equal to 9. So little curveball if you've never seen that symbol before. Hopefully, if you haven't, you're able to take an educated guess at what I was saying. And of course, here's another thing we can do with inequalities. We can say, okay, let's take English and turn it into mathematical symbols. So how do we write the term x is positive? Well, what does it mean to be positive? That means that any number is going to be greater than the number zero. In fact, really, it's any number greater or equal to zero to some people. Some, some people consider zero to not be a positive number. Um, it's up in the air. If you include zero, if you don't, it's all good. So either x is greater or equal to zero, or x is greater than zero. Some teachers are very strict about whether or not they say yes, this is true, or no, that's false. Uh, do what they do and check with your textbook, because if they use a textbook, then go with the textbook. If not, don't go with the textbook. Just be consistent and please your instructor, because that's all they want. They just want to be pleased. Okay, so x is positive. We say x is greater or equal to zero. What if y is less than two and greater or equal to one? Well, we have this and here, so that means we can break it into components. So y is less than two. How do we write that? We say y less than two. And y is greater or equal to negative one. So that's going to be y is greater or equal to negative one. So what we can do is we can combine these together. We can say, okay, y is going to be less than two, but it's going to be greater than negative one. So we can say y is between negative one inclusive and two. So that's how we write that. So I said this is going to be short. That's the real number line. Next time, we're going to take a look at this little equation here and talk about some intervals and how we can show those on the real number line. So I'll see you then. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Share it with your friends. That really helps me out. That helps them out. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time.